Now, with over a million jobs created and over $20 billion in annual revenues, the country's BPO sector is a pillar of the economy and a driver of its growth prospects. Joining us to share both an industry and firm perspective is Rajiv Dand, Regional Vice President and General Manager for Operations of TELUS International Philippines. Rajiv, good to have you with us. Thank you, Quentin. Well, listen, in the current environment, what's your outlook for the industry? Well, the industry has been a catalyst for the economic growth in the Philippines. And according to our industry association, IBAP, the current projection is that the industry will contribute more than 48 billion U.S. dollars in the country's GDP by 2020. And what this has done is it's placed Philippines as the number one voice destination and also made Philippines as the number two global outsourcing partner. And with what happening, the growth is, the growth is not only happening in the Metro Manila area, but in new wave cities of Davao, Iloilo, Dumaguete, and it's creating a virtuous cycle where great customer skills are being delivered and then high-paying jobs are being delivered and sustainable communities are being developed as well. You know, Rajiv, you're looking at a doubling of those revenues. I mean, even eclipsing OFW remittances. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about the emerging trends in 2017 that you see and how the industry is positioned for them. Sure. So if you were to look at the whole contact center industry, you know, we can subcategorize it into various sectors. You have the traditional contact center, you have knowledge process outsourcing, shared services, gaming, IT and software development. And of all these segments, as per the market research, the KPO segment, which is a knowledge and process outsourcing segment, is slated to grow by 23% by the year 2019. So they're going to up the value chain here, 23%. Now, speaking about your company, how mm. is your firm positioned to growth and how, how do you do this vis-a-vis -vis the competition? Sure, absolutely. So if you see, we just launched a new site, a fifth site, Telus House McKinley Exchange, and we are looking to hire people or our potential team members who have high research and analytical skills so that we can position ourselves or strengthen our value proposition as an IPBPO firm which caters to some of the most demanding partner clients and also ensure that we deliver expert in some of the more complex businesses of accounting, uh, uh, financial institutions, uh, architecture and IT development. And the way we position ourselves and I would say is our differentiator is our culture. Because if you go back and look at our company, we started about 15 years ago with a single floor in Discovery Center with about 50 team members. Fast forward to now, we have 13,000 and above team members spread about five sites. And what has made us successful is our culture. You've got exponential growth. Well, part of the culture also is the way the company designs its corporate responsibility and shared value programs. Give us some proof points about that and how it actually retains more employees and as well as grows your, your workforce. Absolutely. So if you were to go out in the market and ask about TELUS, I think one of the differentiators everybody would tell us about is, is our corporate social responsibility. Because we firmly believe in our philosophy of we give where we live. And for that, we have the TELUS Community Board, which is tasked of granting 100,000 Canadian dollars every year to grassroots charities. Whether a typhoon came by and a wall fell down and they needed money to build a wall, or it's taking street children off the streets and building a basketball court for them. And the beauty about the board is that majority of the board members are non telus team members. Mm. They're community leaders who know where the money is needed. So we're actually giving... So you've got some relevance in there as well. Absolutely. And the other part is that we also have a lot of sweat equity. When our team members want to go out on team buildings, we offer them to go and work in the communities, build houses, work with neglected children, work with women, and they go out of love. And that has helped them in sustaining some of the communities that we have. So between the board and set sweat equity that our team members give, I think we have a unique position in the CSR. Well, Rajiv, it's certainly used closely to a Nielsen study that shows, you know, for millennials, especially with the workforce, mm -hmm. adding meaning to the job actually helps retain them and grow them as individuals. Appreciate your insights and all the best to your firm. Thank you. Right.